all you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations, a rebroadcast of The Jack Benny Show with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Jack Benny's special guest singer, and Don Wilson. broadcasting from the Puget Sound Navy Yard near Seattle, Washington. And I know all you boys here are anxiously waiting to be entertained. So while you're waiting, we bring you Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, we have a pretty full script this week, so we won't linger on that introduction of yours. And anyway, after that wonderful boat trip we had from Vancouver, I'm in no mood to be mad. Well, thanks, Jack. And by the way, Don, we've been off the boat three days. You can take off that life preserver. You know? <laughs> Go ahead. Life preserver? Yes. I'm not wearing one. Oh, 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 and oh, Jack, oh, oh. Jack, I, I wish you'd stop saying things like that. You're always giving people the impression I'm fat. Oh, no, no, Don, you're not fat at all. Just that you have a little bulge around the bill. <laughs> anyway, Don, we're not here to... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Say, Jack, what were you and Don talking about? Uh, the boat trip. How'd you like it, Mary? Well, I thought it was a little rough. Rough? Certainly. Every place I went on the boat, I'd find some sailor's arm around me. <laughs> well, uh, what was wrong with that? I was with a soldier at the time. <laughs> well, that I can't understand at all. Oh, uh, me either. Well, it's very simple, fellas. When I walked around the boat, I, uh... Don, the trip is over. Take off that life preserver. <laughs> Mary, uh, Mary, I made the, uh, I made the... <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I made the... You, I'm laughing at my own jokes here. You think I was... <laughs> Sound like Fred Allen a little bit, don't I? <laughs> well, Mary, I made the uh, same mistake. Uh, you see, that's the one nature gave Don, a built-in revolving turret. <laughs> Or, as the boys here affectionately call it, a battleship blister. <laughs> and incidentally, this is the last time I ever take the cast on a boat. Uh, Phil Harris told me that the trip upset him. Well, you know how Phil is. He just doesn't like the ocean. Yeah, it hurts Phil to see all that chaser with nothing to break trail for. <laughs> And Frankie, his guitar player. Did you ever see anyone drink so much beer? Why, Jack, Frankie doesn't drink beer. He doesn't, eh? All I know is every time he looked over the side of the boat and saw a white cap, he'd try to blow the foam off of it. <laughs> Jack, uh, as long as this is a time for criticizing people, let's get to you. Amia? Uh, Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that night on the boat, when the whole gang sat down at dinner, it wouldn't have hurt you to pick up the check. I was going to, but it just happened that the check was closer to Phil. <laughs> Not until you blew it there. <laughs> Mary, I was blowing my soup. Uh, out of the side of your mouth? I always blow like that. Well, you... <laughs> well, you've certainly got a good aim. Yesterday, you blew the check to Phil. The day before, you blew it to Don. And the day oh, before... Oh, stop, the... <laughs> will you? <laughs> Say, Jack. What? <laughs> How long did it take you to learn to blow a curve? <laughs> well, it isn't easy. First, I had to have two wisdom teeth removed. <laughs> and then I had... I'll take it. Hello? Hollywood calling? No, operator, he's not on the stage at the moment, but I'll get him. Phil! Hey, Phil! Coming, Jackson! Okay, sailors, the intermission is over. Harris is here. Yeah! 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 yeah. Oh. Phil! 
Phil. Phil, never mind the corny entrance. There's a long-distance call for you from Hollywood. Oh, a long-distance call. Gee, I've been expecting this call. Hello. Yeah, well, put him on. Put him on. Hiya, pal. Yeah, what is it? No kidding. Well, how about that? Gee, that's terrific. Oh, boy, wait till the gang hears about this. So long. Phil, Phil, what is it? Yeah, what happened? Flat Top got away. <laughs> well, uh... well, of all the... Phil, I thought you were going to tell us about your, about your new baby. What new baby? Your, your new baby, the one that was born Wednesday morning. I read about it in the paper. Well, how do you like that? Them newspaper guys scooped me again. <laughs> Phil, you mean to tell me you didn't know about your baby? No, and gee, Jackson, am I glad you read about it. Hey, Wilson, hand me that phone. Sure, anything to help you out, Papa. Can I get the number for you? Phil, who are you going to call? Alice, I want to tell her the good news. <laughs> Phil, she knows, she knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so excited, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I don't blame you for being excited. Congratulations. Yes, Phil, congratulations. That goes for me, too, Phil. Well, thanks, fellas. Oh, say, Jackson, you didn't tell me what my new baby is. Is it a boy or a girl or a... Hey, that's all there is, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you figure that out nicely all by yourself, Phil. <laughs> thanks, Jackson. Phil, your new baby is a girl. Gee, another girl. I'm a regular Papa Dion. <laughs> Phil, he had five girls. You've only got two. Okay, so I'm a Papa D on JG. <laughs> yeah, JG, JG. But no kidding, Phil. You were only ribbing us. You knew about your baby all the time. Didn't Why, you? of course, Jackson. What do you think I am, a dope? Well, we won't go into that. Just play a band number and keep the show moving. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was I'll Get By, played by Phil Harris and his Makes You Want to Ask for Sea Duty Orchestra. <laughs> and now, fellas, for our feature attraction tonight, we're... Mary, Mary, will you please stop flirting with that sailor? I'm not flirting with any sailor. Now, Mary, don't deny it. With my very own eyes, I saw you winking at a sailor. I was not. I was winking at all of them and hoped that one would wink back. <laughs> well, don't be so forward. Besides, if it's a boyfriend you want, I'm... Still available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mary, what are you laughing at? I want one that'll last for, for the, the duration. For the duration, I know. <laughs> Anything for a laugh, eh, Mary? Well, don't worry about me. Anybody who can go through three straight hours at the beach cafe isn't made of straw, you know. <laughs> the beach cafe? Yeah, that beach cafe is quite a place here. I was even in the back room where they do tattooing. <laughs> tattooing? <laughs> yeah, they tattoo back there. Look, Jack, and I'll pull up my sleeve. See? I had a wristwatch tattooed on me. Let's see that. Say, that's the first time I ever saw a wristwatch tattooed on anybody. It looks good, too. Yeah, but the guy gypped me. It don't run. <laughs> oh, fine. He wants it to run yet. And the strap is loose, too. Oh, for heaven's sake. Now I've heard everything. Phil, as long as you got tattooed, why didn't you get something sensible? Come in. Hello? 
Hello, Mr. Denny. Remember me? I'm Ruby Wagner, Mary Livingston's girlfriend. Oh, yes, yes. Ruby, what are you doing in Bremerton? I followed you here from Vancouver. You did? But well, Mary, Ruby, this what happened when you left like that when I said goodbye? I said goodbye. 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 I said uh, Ruby, did I hear you say you didn't like the boat ride from Vancouver? No, the boat was filled with sailors. Gee, was I upset. Why, did they bother you? No. <laughs> now, look, girls, we've got a program to uh, do. Ruby, you remember Jack Benny. I introduced you to him last week. Oh, sure. I'm happy to see you again. Any friend of Mary's is a friend of mine. <laughs> yes, I, uh... <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Ruby, I think you ought to go back to Vancouver. Your family will be worried. Oh, no, Mary. I'm going with you right to Hollywood. When I found out that you were a great radio actress, I decided to become an actress, too. But, Ruby, radio is a hard job. It took me a long time oh, to... Oh, Mary, stop worrying. I'm going into pictures. You'll say. <laughs> oh, fine. Now we got a picture star with us. Another Katherine Hepburn. Catherine this. Oh. The color lilies are in bloom again. Really, they are. Those big, beautiful color lilies are in bloom Ruby. again. Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> really, you haven't seen... Ruby. Ruby, Really, have... you haven't seen beautiful color lilies until you see my color lilies. Ruby, so look, Ruby. Come with me and see my color lilies. They're such lovely color lilies. Miss Hepburn. Yes. <laughs> Now, listen, Ruby, we've got a program to do. Uh, sit down, Ruby, and I'll see you right after the show. Yeah, because right now I've got an important announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, say hello to my mother. Not now. Uh, ladies and mothers. I mean, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tonight, we have a special guest on our program. As you know, last Sunday was Dennis Day's final appearance on our show before entering the Navy. So tonight, our guest is a popular young singer who in a very short time has made a great name for himself. And here he is, 20th Century Fox's new singing star, Dick Haynes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Dick, it was awfully nice of you to come up here all the way from Los Angeles and help us out on our broadcast. Well, I'm very glad to do it, Jack, for you and for Dennis Day. You know, Dennis and I are pretty good friends. Well, that's swell. I'm glad to hear it. By the way, Dick, I want you to meet our gang. Uh, this is Don Wilson. Hello, Dick. Hello, Don. Say, Jack, who's the guy behind him? That's still Don Wilson. <laughs> and this is my orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Richard. What are you going to give out when you make with them tonsils? <laughs> what? Well, the kid's going to loosen his lungs and lay it right on the line. <laughs> Phil, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, Jack, he's just beating his gums with some hep jive about my hot pipe. Oh, oh, I get it. I, I was a little slow for a minute. Well, Dick, now that you've met everybody, how about singing uh, your... Don't mind me, Jack. I'll go out and sit with the sailors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mary. Dick, this is Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I always listen to you on the radio. Oh, gosh, how can a girl who's so pretty say things that are so funny? Oh, Dick, I'll let you say that to all of us pretty girls. <laughs> Mary, don't be facetious. Go ahead, Dick. Bump your gums, kid. Bump your gums. Start to 
Love you, sung by Dick Hames, and I was really swell. Thanks, Jack. By the way, Dick, uh, we're going to finish out this season with guest singers. And next Sunday, we're flying up to Whidbey Island to broadcast at the Naval Air Station. I wish you could be with us. Well, I'd like to stay, Jack, if you can get me a better place to sleep. But, Dick, uh, Seattle is so congested, you should be satisfied with the place you've got. I know, but that Bremerton Ferry is so crowded. (laughs) Oh, yes, (laughs) Yes, I, uh, I can appreciate how noisy it is. Well, it wouldn't be if you didn't snore so loud. <laughs> well, it isn't my fault. The boat keeps rolling me over on my back, you know. <laughs> anyway, Dick, I'm glad that you'll be with us next Sunday. So am I. Huh? Oh, Dick, uh, this is Ruby Wagner from Vancouver. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Wagner. Any friend of Mr. Denny's is a friend of mine. <laughs> yes, yes, we're, we're all friends. You know, Mr. Haynes, I think you have a beautiful voice. Ruby. Ruby. When you sing, I could just die, and believe me, it ain't easy to kill me. <laughs> Ruby, look, I Ru- used to listen to you all the time when now, I Now, Ruby, was... stop. Now, sit down. Oh, go button your cuffs and swear your hat. <laughs> Don't mind her, Dick. She's a friend of Mary's from Vancouver. And any friend of Mary's is a friend... Sit down! (laughs) Say, Jack. Say, Jack, I have friends in Vancouver, too. Did you have a nice week up there? Oh, it was wonderful. Grand. Well, how'd you like that boat trip coming back? From Vancouver? Oh, it was terrific. It was great for for an old sailor like me. Now, kid, I love the sea. I was up on that top deck for eight hours watching... Now, wait a minute, Jack. Why don't you tell him the truth? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Listen, Dick, this will tell you. We were in Vancouver. It was a half hour before boat time. And Jack was in his hotel room getting ready to leave. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss. Rochester, we got to hurry and get out of this hotel. The boat leaves in half an hour. I know. And you should have finished packing long ago. But, boss, I had to go up on the roof and take your shirts off the line. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You know, Mr. Benny, it's a good thing we're checking out of here. The hotel laundry is sure mad at you. Oh, they are, eh? Well, I've got a right to do my laundry if I want to. Oh, yeah, but not everybody. <laughs> Don't be silly. I didn't do everybody's laundry. I just happened to help out a few friends. Friends? They didn't even know who you were until I slipped those cards under their doors. 
What cars? The ones that said wet wash, rough drive, flat work, and violin recitals while waiting. <laughs> oh, that. I just did that for a gag. Anyway, Rochester, let's, uh... Come in. Did you call for a bellboy? Yes, uh, I don't have much time to uh, make the boat, so will you please rush these things down to the lobby? These? Yes. Hmm. What's the matter? Well, some people in checking out of this hotel are taking little bars of soap as souvenirs. <laughs> Others have had the nerve to take some towels. But Mr. Benny, a mattress. <laughs> what? Are you accusing me of taking a mattress? That's what he said. That's what the man said. He said that. <laughs> Rochester, stop helping him. Now, why in the world would I take a mattress? To go with that bed we got from the last hotel. <laughs> Rochester. He he took a bed to go with the bathtub we got from the Rochester. <laughs> now stop making up those ridiculous things. Now listen, boy, I had nothing to do with this mattress. It was rolled up by the maid. Oh, it was, eh? Yes. Well, unroll it and take the maid out. <laughs> Can I help it if she's clumsy? Now grab these bags. I don't want to miss the bowl. <laughs> Jack? Oh, it's wonderful, Mary. And the water's so calm and clear. Yeah, Dante, there's nothing like a boat trip. Ain't that right, Jackson? Uh... <laughs> Rochester, give me another one of those mother still seasick pills. Hmm? Another one, boss? Yes. If this is going to be a long trip, mother better speed up production. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester... Please stop joking and give me a pill. Hey, Jackson, mm. why don't you just take it easy and relax? Relax? Right now he looks like a glass of milk with no glass around it. <laughs> Fellas, cut it out, will you? Gee, I'm glad somebody feels worse than I do. <laughs> That's a boat whistle. Oh, yes. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, how long before the boat docks at Seattle? Twelve hours. Twelve hours? Why so long? We haven't even left Vancouver yet. <laughs> oh, another pill, Rochester. Another pill. Jack Benny Show is rebroadcast especially for you soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen of the United Nations. Now we turn the remainder of the program over to the Benny Bandmaster, Phil Harris. Music, Phil. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.